Let's derive Black-Scholes equation. We've paid the, the price by doing the technical lemmas, now let's get the payoff. All right, what's the situation? So we have S of T is our asset price. And let's say that V of S and T is our option price. And we're gonna say it's one call option. So how do we get started? How do we find a formula for V? Let's make an assumption. So assume that S is log normal. And so we saw that before. What does that mean? That means that DS is the drift plus the volatility. All right, so here is the drift is proportional to the size of the, the asset. And then the volatility is also proportional to the, to the size. And this gives the log normal random walk. Now the fundamental idea of the Black-Scholes equation is that we go long, if I can write, go long the option and short the asset. And in particular, we wanna do, take some position, so I'm gonna call the position pi. So it's gonna be long the asset, or long the option, and then short some proportion of the asset. And the proportion we're gonna call delta. So delta is gonna be you know, our, our hedge, hedging factor. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to hedge changes in the asset price against the option price. So that means if the asset price changes a little bit, we want our, our position to not change in value at all. And it turns out we're gonna have to keep rehedging every time step. So this is a, a dynamic hedge. And what is it? So we, we haven't got to the point where we know what delta is yet, but we're, we're gonna figure out what delta is pretty soon. So let's take a derivative here. So the change in our, the value of our portfolio is just gonna be dv minus delta ds, just taking a derivative. And now what's dv? dv, we can use Ida's lemma. And so we have to use the multi-dimensional Ito's lemma that we did last time. And so how do you do that? It's the first derivative parts. So the derivative respect to S, DS, derivative respect to T, DT. And now we have to do the second order part. And if you remember, so here is, this is our formula for DS. Here's our A part from the lemma and here's the B part. And the second derivative has a b squared term. So we have to not forget about that. So we have a half sigma squared s squared partial of v with respect to s squared dt. So Ito's lemma gives us this formula for dv. So now we can write d pi, expand that out a bit. So d pi equals dv. So let's just copy this down. T dt plus half times the second derivative stuff. Then minus delta ds. Okay. Let's collect up terms now. Equation's getting a bit messy. So let's collect up the ds terms first. So we get a partial of v with respect to s minus delta ds. And now let's collect up the dt's. And so we get a v with respect to t plus half sigma squared s squared partial of v with respect to s, second derivative, dt. Okay, so I just collected the terms, and now we choose delta equals to partial of v with respect to s. And so this choice means that 
this will go to zero. And in fact, we just get d pi is v with respect to t plus the half sigma squared s squared second partial with respect to s dt. OK, so we've managed to choose our delta now. And our delta is eliminating all the stochastic part of the change of value of our portfolio. Right, so if you remember, when we have a, a stochastic equation like this, there's the deterministic part and the stochastic part, the random part. And we're setting the random part equal to 0. What does that mean? If we have an equation that is entirely deterministic, now we can use the no arbitrage argument. And the no arbitrage argument says that if we have cash flows that are known, then they have to be equal. And so what's another known cash flow that's entirely deterministic? That is putting your money in the bank. So if you put your money in the bank, what do you get? You get the change of your bank account is the interest rate times the amount of money you have times the time step. So just expanding that out, that means we have R times uh, our position was long, the option, short, some amount of stock, DT. So now we have a formula for d pi here. So we've got this one. We've got this one here. So let's put them together. So I'm going to do this this one here on the left. It's partial with respect to t plus a half sigma squared s squared second one s squared dt and I'm doing the right side this one over here so this will be rv and what was uh, delta so if you remember that delta this is partial of v with respect to s so remember we, we chose our delta so let's plug that in down here so rv minus r partial of v with respect to s times s. And this is all times dt. Now using some physics math, we can divide both sides by dt. So mathematicians hate this, but you know it works. Let's do it. Now I'll rewrite this. sigma squared s squared second derivative with respect to s squared equals rv minus r partial with respect to s times s and now i'm just going to move everything to the left hand side nothing too exciting so with respect to t sigma squared, s squared, second partial with respect to s. Now plus r s partial of v with respect to s minus r v equals 0. So I just moved everything to the left. And look at that. We have the Black-Scholes equation. Here it is. Black. Shoals. Pretty cool. So I'm going to review this just because I want to remember this. This is good. So we started with the asset and the option. We assumed that the asset was log normal random walk. So that gives us this formula. Black Shoals, we take a position that's long the option and short some quantity of the asset. So here's our position. And the change of our asset position of our position is going to be here then Ito's lemma lets us write a formula for our change of asset 
of the change of our position and we choose our delta in order to make the random part of our d pi go away. And so choosing delta within this time step eliminates the randomness at the time step. And so we get a deterministic uh, d pi. Then because we've eliminated the randomness, we can use a no arbitrage argument to say, this cash flow must be the same as money in the bank. And so here's money in the bank, put these equal and sub, you know, substitute everything in, we get this equation, divide by dt, group terms together, and you have the Black-Scholes equation. Pretty neat, I like it.